everybody, this is Josh with Keep Turning. Uh, today we're going to spend a little time in InDesign playing around with data merge. Uh, if you've never heard of data merge, um, it's not something that a lot of people use in InDesign, but it's a really powerful tool and it'll save you a ton of time working on things like business cards, flash cards, uh, catalog pages if the layouts stay the same. The, the key for this to work well is that you're creating a product where your layout is pretty much stagnant. It's just continuously changing data and images in the same uh, layout and design. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to open up an uh, InDesign document. I got uh, some flashcards that I'm working on. <clears throat> um, got a front of a card, back of the card for a game. Um, Lay it out like you normally would. I got it broken up. I have my art, uh, character image, the text, and the die line. And uh, <clears throat> I set this up mainly just for uh, for layout. I found it easier uh, doing this uh, to actually break the numbers up into their each into their own text boxes. It's not necessary, but to get everything to align the way I wanted and not have stuff having to mess around with the trying to get the kerning and everything set just right uh, with this automation. I just separated them. So um, so we got all that in there. I'm numbering these uh, so it's easy for everybody to see how they're connected to the, uh, um, the Excel document that we're going to be using to uh, import our data. So let's close this up for now, and we're going to open up Excel. And... Uh, well, actually, I think I have already pre-named uh, file in here. Where is it? Uh, so I got, I already have one that's a blank uh, table. Um, so you got a blank table here. <clears throat> the first row is going, you're going to basically make headers and name what each of those individual boxes are going to be called. So with this, since I already named them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's what we're going to name these. That's going to be the... Uh, naming convention for this data. So, one, two, three, four, six, and seven. Okay, so that is where all the individual data that connects to those boxes will go. When we see those, there's box one. All the data for box one will go in this column. <clears throat> this last column uh, is for the back where we have an image. There's going to be a character down here. Uh, we'll just name that. They're going to be these little aliens, so we'll just name it uh, aliens. But what you have to do when you're using images to let the program know it's an image is you have to put the at symbol, and then we'll name it alien. And uh, one second, let's put do not disturb. Kevin's bugging me. Let's see here. Thanks a lot, Kevin. You just screwed up this whole thing. It's ruined. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> he hates when I do that. No, he's do not disturb. All right, so uh, going back to this. Uh, so we just put an at symbol to let the program know it's going to be an image. Type in a name for it. We're going to call it alien. The problem is because of how Excel uh, handles information, we hit return, it's going to say that function is invalid because of the at symbol. So what you have to do is before the at symbol, you have to put an apostrophe. That will let you lock it in, and uh, now it's good to go. So uh, at this point, uh, let's first put in our images. So if we go to our folder here, uh, I have all my images collected in this links folder. And uh, you got aliens 1, 2, 3, and 4 for this set. <clears throat> what you have to do is you have to let uh, InDesign know where these files are kept by putting it in here. So what we have to do is you put, this is on a Mac, so it's going to be forward slash. Uh, on a PC, it would be backward slash. And I think on a PC, you have to put a period first uh, and then put the information. Otherwise, it won't find it. So on a Mac... Uh, it's in the links folder, so forward slash links, forward slash name of the file with the file extension .ai because I'm using Illustrator files. Um, so we have that there. I, I have four of these, so 
um, I'm just going to paste in four here and we're just going to rename the file aliens two, three, and four. It's real simple. You can name this stuff whatever you want. Just make sure it matches your naming convention for your file. And that's it. So all these will be linked now. Now, like I said, I have the numbers broken up into two columns. So this is column one, column two for the top number, column one, column two for the bottom number. <clears throat> so uh, for the first one, let's make it like 10. And we're going to be adding... Uh, 15 to it and the answer will be 25 uh, I didn't split them on the back because it wasn't necessary uh, and then these two columns let the person know it, how many spaces they go backwards or forwards. so if they get it wrong they go backwards one if they get it right they go forward two so I'm gonna do three more of these we'll just do random uh, numbers in here so let's say 3 plus 13 equals 16 and backwards 2 1 and 2 22 plus 4 26 and and then the last one uh, let's make this one let's see here let's make this one 7 plus 20 to um, 29 all right and uh, we'll just make it one and five it's a big card all right so now that we have all our information in here uh, we need to save our file um, so we'll just say save and then after we save it uh, we're gonna have to go back and choose save as uh, because InDesign won't recognize an Excel document, so we have to click on this, and you can either choose this right here, a TXT file, and there's various ones, but you want this one, this tab, or you can choose uh, comma separated values, the CSV file. This is what I've been using, and it works fine on a Mac. Um, so once you choose that, just hit save. So now it's going to save it. It warns that uh, some of this data might be lost, but it's not going to matter for our uses. So we can close this now. Now that we have the Excel document all set up, uh, let's go back to InDesign, to our actual uh, file. And we have to pull up the data merge uh, window. So that is under Utilities, Data Merge. Um, once this comes up, click the upper right and bring the drop down and choose Select Data Source and we're going to find our CSV file in our folder choose that and hit open and now it's <clears throat> filled our window with all the information that we put in there it'll show the headers for each column and we need to link each of those columns to the corresponding information so I'm I'm gonna start with five just because it's going to show you what it looks like uh, I'm gonna run into since the the text is so big and the windows are so small, I'm going to get text overflow. So some of these are just going to disappear, but it won't matter. When we actually output, everything will show up. But we'll start with five so you can see what happens. Let's go to our text layer and uh, get this. I'm going to highlight the – oops, on that. All right, I'm going to highlight the five, and then I'm going to choose five. And – this is what it looks like when the data is linked in data merge. Anything that has been linked will have these symbols around it, letting you know that it is uh, linked information, and it will actually show up under links. Uh, you're right up here under your flashcard data. Uh, you actually see it under the links, and if there were updates made to this file, you would get a symbol warning you that your file needs updated. So, going back to this, let's do each of these. We'll get seven. And see, they're going to disappear because once it puts that those additional uh, symbols in, it overflows, so it just runs off. Uh, but again, not a big deal. It's also going to let you know what page it's linked to. So, let's uh, 
scroll back up here and scroll up here and we'll get these ones so we'll get one <clears throat> three and four all right so now all that stuff's linked and all we have left is to link our image so let's close our text layer lock it up and open up our character layer there's our uh, image box and we just double click and there it is so it's linked now we can see information's dropped in there it's locked in and after all those things are locked in to preview it uh, in the lower left corner is a uh, box you just click it and it'll drop all the information in and you can then flip through and see the info being dropped in uh, if we scroll back up let's see the top one make sure these are all working how they're supposed to yeah that looks good all right so all that info and you could have hundreds the all these cards are then put together for you it's it drops all the information in it plugs in the corresponding images and if you make any changes to that uh, CSV document uh, you can go in here and then choose update data source and it will check it you'll have to preview it again but it will re uh, upload all the information and update everything so now that we have all our info uploaded uh, it's still just a single document so what we're gonna have to do is click the upper right and we're gonna choose create merge document uh, from here we have a few things we have to go through uh, leave this checked so if you have any overset text it will let you know if it, it overflowed and you have to fix it um, it'll also alert you if you have any images missing if one of the links broke uh, so we have that all set let's go to our um, this we're not changing anything we'll keep it all the same and uh, you have control options over the images I already have mine fit exactly to the size I wanted them in Illustrator so I'm just gonna say fit image proportionately because I had it ready to go it doesn't need adjusted if your images are a little you know random and got different sizes and stuff you may want to set it to uh, you know uh, preserve the frame and image sizes you can get it to uh, fit the frame it just depends on wor what works best for your layout um, so I'm just going to leave mine on fit image proportionally. Um, and then I'm going to hit OK. And what it's going to do now is it lets me know there was no problems. And this is the file. So now if we zoom out, we can see it produced all those individual cards for us. Instead of having to go through and make each one and type each one in, all we had to do was type them into that uh, that. Excel document, import it, and let InDesign output everything for us. It takes a little planning. You have to think things through about how you're going to use your images and how things are going to lay out because um, once, you know, everything kind of has to hold its spot where it should be, um, along with, like, the reason why I did the text the way I did was so I could center it up and everything always fell right above each other because trying to adjust that stuff uh, – takes a lot of time trying to figure it out ahead of time uh, if you're not you know if you're trying to get it all uh, perfectly aligned <clears throat> especially with certain fonts that just the kerning is just crazy on some of them and takes a lot of adjustments so uh, so once we have that you, you have your finished file here and from there you can do like normal you can go through and export it however you'd like um, create PDFs and uh, you're done and you can save this file but uh, definitely keep your original file so if you have to make adjustments you just output again and always keep this single file uh, as your working file for uh, correcting stuff unless it's things that happen way down at the end that they need uh, minor adjustments uh, that you can't do on this one single file so that's uh, that's basically all it takes to uh, using uh, data merge. Um, if you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments and uh, you guys have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.